This is Allie Cochran, the Martha Stewart of slip casting. She's got something to show us. Okay, so this is the mold of the object, and it pulls apart right where those lines are, but everything kind of slides into place, and you can see that these little areas lock both all the pieces in. I'm gonna secure it with just rubber bands. Okay, so this is all together, and it's all clean, and we're ready to go. So this is what it's called casting slip, and this is basically a porcelain clay, but in a liquid form. It looks good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it in here for about 15 minutes. See you in 15. <laughs> okay, it's been 15 minutes, and we can take on with the rest of the show. Okay, we're just gonna straight dump it back into here, just to make sure that we get all of it out. And what's left in there becomes the object. Yeah. Okay, well, it's been another 15 minutes, so we know that all the slip now has kind of drained out of this thing, and you can even see kind of the residue that's left on the table. It dries quick. Yeah, it does dry pretty quick. I'll put my plug in, and I like to put a little handle on it so when I pull it out, it comes out easy because I want this to be super flush. So now I'm gonna turn this over. This is gonna sit upside down, so all that slip settles on the bottom and covers up that hole, and this will probably sit for like six or seven hours. Um, and since that's really long, <laughs> this is another piece I have, but I poured this hours ago, so it's ready to come out. This is my mold strap, and I'm just gonna open it up. I'm gonna take this piece out of the mold. It's called a metal rib, just a scraper basically. I'll just take that edge off a little bit with this, and I'll just clean it up so it, it mm -hmm. fits all the way back together. It's like scraping binding on a guitar. We actually sell a little scraper like that. It's oh, bad. you do? Mm -hmm. I'm always Not quite exactly, but you'd, I'm, I'll get you a set. Yeah, I say I'm always looking for new tools. I use a lot of cake decorating tools. Sure, yeah, I do too. Yeah, just anything. And so now that this is all cleaned up, and once it's totally, um, call it bone dry, then I'll put it into the kiln. So this body, and we think the neck would have been slip cast like that, right? Yes. At what point would they put the sound holes in it? So they probably would have cut it um, right about this stage that we're at right now because the clay is, you know, it's still kind of soft enough um, that you can cut. So they would have probably taken a knife, maybe similar to this, and you can just go in wherever and kind of cut these holes out. It's got a lot of strength already. Look at that. Yeah. And this neck is hollow, at least down to there, because I shoved the long plastic stick all the way down it. Oh, wow. Let's make a guitar. Yeah. You think you could do something with this? Actually, I could. <laughs> Hi, Dan. So we just loaded up Allie's work into the kiln. This is an electric kiln, so it's heated up by a series of electric coils. So for the guitar, Brad thought it was a low fire um, clay. So we're thinking that that's probably around um, 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, well, the pieces are out of the kiln now. You can kind of think about how the guitar was made a lot bigger and then had to shrink to the appropriate size. So this is the piece I was originally working on. Um, and this got fired once and this got covered in glaze. And then we put it in the kiln again and this is what we have left. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for having us over. Oh, you're welcome. It's been great. I've learned a lot. and I may go back to school. 